order to produce oil or gas, you need to have some driving force that would lift this oil or gas on the surface. So people started drilling wells and pumping water down. This water will eventually push the oil through the rock and people will be able to collect it at the well. My name is Dmitry Lakshtanov and I work as a specialist petrophysicist for BP. I do experiments with microcomputer tomography. So what do we need to know? Why do we need to know how the fluid flow through the sandstone? BP needs to have a good understanding of how fast fluid will flow and how much of the oil they will be able to recover at a certain point. Timing of the decision making is vital. You know whether you go ahead with this field. So sometimes you cannot wait for half a year or a year to get your results. Sometimes you need to decide now. The conventional experiment when you operate with physical fluids and the real rocks. It may take up to half a year to obtain several data points, something that would take days for us. What we do in a lab, I take the rock and create a very precise, very high resolution, three-dimensional digital image of this rock. So it's a practically a digital model of it. What do I know about it from this digital model? First, the geometry of how grains are set within the rock. What are and where are the pore spaces? And what geometry do those pore spaces have? Why is that important? Because when we think how fluids flow, everything in the pore space will matter. It depends on which minerals are sitting on the surface of this pore space, on an interface between the fluid and the solid matrix. So we need to know how much of the oil can be stored in this rock, how fast will it flow, not only oil, but also water, because usually there is a mixture of fluids. We need to know what is the electrical conductivity. We need to know what is the average speed of sound going through these rocks. The way people search for the reservoirs that contain oil, they're using seismics. And seismic signal propagates with the speed of sound. So this the properties that we are mostly interested in. Digital rock, that's a high resolution representation of the real rock. We collect a series of X-ray absorption 2D slices that are later reconstructed into a single tomogram. Tomogram is the three-dimensional image. How you can actually imagine that, that a stack of two-dimensional slices. Each voxel or three-dimensional pixel then attributed some digital value. The segmented tomogram, well, it is a digital rock. Sample preparation is probably the most important part. We use the real material that was quite expensive to, to get at the surface. The most important part is to preserve the structure of the sample, because that's exactly what we want to measure. All our instruments that we use must be extremely gentle and very high precision. There are plenty of difficulties that I usually encounter. The sample may be too fragile, and then it will be quite difficult to preserve its integrity. Too many things can happen to your sample while you're preparing it. It can crack, that means you need to start all over. Samples need to be attached to the pins and mounted on a system. The tomographic scanner 
that we have. It consists of an optical table. You have the X-ray tube that generates the X-rays. On the other side of the sample, you have an X-ray detector. If you're talking about tomography, people would usually imagine the medical type CTs, which is a big gantry, and you put a patient in the middle, and then you need the camera and your X-ray source to, to move around the patient in a very precise manner. In our case, camera is fixed and the X-ray source is fixed. We are rotating the patient instead. This is why it's so much smaller and easier to construct. And actually we can get to uh, two orders of magnitude, a finer detailization. The medical CT operates three to 500 micron per voxel. In our case, we go down to one. Once you set up your sample, then you start the sequence where you better not breathe anywhere around this room for the next 20, 22 hours. Then you collect a series of projections. Could be up to 15, 20 thousand of those projections collected for a particular tomogram. This later on needs to be uploaded to a supercomputer in Houston to be digitized, segmented, and experimented on with the rest of my group who sits in Houston. We have plenty of visitors from universities and other companies that go through the lab and I show them what I do. like a modern art, really. People who do experiments, they can appreciate it. The quality of what we're getting there is distinctive. There are several systems like ours, but we are among the best. Mm -hmm.